five SEC titles, Alabama, Florida, and LSU. So the winner of this one stands alone with a sixth. And Alexis Mack swinging at the first pitch right back up the middle. Extends her hitting streak now to nine in a row. The Crimson Tide winners of 12 straight. They are smoking hot coming in here. Terrific crowd on hand here at the Rhodes House as Bailey draws the walk. 2-1 Johnson diving in safe at home on the squeeze has Alabama on the board. And the first punch pulled comes from Pat Murphy. Well, how about Johnson getting this bunt down perfectly? And I love the fact that Mack is on it, immediately taking off. Perfect execution. And the bench is loving it, getting on the board early. One of the keys for Alabama. Hot shot to third, and it gets away from Adams at second, and Hempel will come in to score. And they're going to try for another, and diving back into the base at third is Johnson. And now they've got sides hung up, and they'll force her back to first base. And they're on their feet early here at the Rhodes House. They're going to try and steal one, the throw to the plate, and Bama scores again. Wow. Sides and Johnson played it perfectly. Out here to settle his team down as they fall behind quickly, 3-0 on a rare miscue. Yeah, uncharacteristic error made there by Sharla Eccles. And then I love the way that Alabama just continued to keep their foot on the gas pedal base running wise. KB Sides, she knows her speed. She left herself out, put herself out there to try to get in a rundown to score Jenna Johnson. That's why she was doing it to try to lure the Florida defense into looking at her. And all the meanwhile, Jenna Johnson scored. And now all of a sudden, you guys, Alabama up 3 nothing, scored two runs. It's going to be more pitch to contact. Base hit. They're going to send her the throw to the plate, and she is out. Jamie Hoover with a good throw. Sides thrown out at home. Pat Murphy's going to argue that there should have been obstruction. The call was out at home. Well, Maddie Morgan takes a leverage count and just drives this ball into the outfield. Hoover picks it up immediately and is going to make the throw home in a lot of times. Look at where Wilkie is. A lot of times they say if you're on the foul side of the line when you catch the ball. But remember, it's catch then tag. So the question is, is she in a good position? She's in a good position until she has to go get the ball. The ball takes her into foul territory. She makes the tag. So there she is. She's got to move to make the catch. She makes the tag. And KB sides, you could see, kind of sidestepped a little bit. So All right, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Uh, the runner is out. And the ruling is confirmed. Runner out at home. Rise ball for a strikeout, one down. Called strike three on the outside corner, two down. Eccles off the glove of Woodard. And out into center, and Sharla wins the first battle with Fouts today. The rise ball fights it off, and that's going to fall in. Eccles will head to third as Lindemann singles the other way. Fouts got her with the rise. Three strikeouts in the inning for Montana. And a strikeout for Hightower. Three up and three down. And another strikeout. That's four for Fouts. One down. 70 to 74 miles an hour. Sarah Longley, and that one will fall over the head of Taylor Clark for a base hit. Third of the game for the Gators. Right back to Fouts. The backhand, underhand, side retired can carry a whole team forward and elevates, elevate everybody's swings. And she's on board for the second time.
That was a 15-3 win. That was the last game of Kelly Barnhill's career, and this could be two. And it is. The Florida defense shines. From the dugout. Line to short. Longley goes down to get it. Side retire. And draws the walk, so Eccles aboard for the second time. Got her on the rise. Specs of your mechanics. Right back to Hightower, ready to defend. Side is retired. Great player, Mary Ratliff. Another strikeout for Fouts. That's six. One down. 2-2. Two -two. Strikeout number seven. Two down. That record. And a hit batter here, Bailey Goddard. Regional action. Longley, Morgan, stayed down on it. Side retired. All that you have done for the sport. He's out there today with Steve Gould and Cameron Ellison. And a memorable night for, for that SEC. That could be trouble with Brown. Speed, she beats it out. All you need is the high hop, and she got it there. Runner goes, and they have Brown out at second. Deep, Longley, not in time, and Mack reaches with two outs, and it brings up Bailey Hempel. Really only the opportunity to hit it foul hard. Third time that Bailey is... And another strikeout. One shy of tying the record. And that's number eight tonight. But it's gone up a level here. That one's over her head to short. Taylor Clark's got it, two down. Montana Fouts has just tied the SEC tournament strikeout record with her 37th in three games. Four, five, and six here for Alabama. And the strikeout of Jenna Johnson. One down. And she reaches for the outside pitch and goes oppo. Three, two. Struck her out, runner goes, the throw down. Hits. Sides, who's safe at second. Deck. Draws the walk, and here comes Clark, who... Clark, lines one to left, base hit, and a run will score. Taylor Clark steps up again, battles with two strikes. Little bit in on her hands, but she's able to get enough barrel on it to send it to Jamie to left field just in front of Jamie Hoover. And Taylor Clark has shown so much emotion. Everybody's stepping up and playing a part for this Alabama team seeking. Struck her out. Cronister ends the threat. A new SEC tournament record. 38K for Montana Fouts. Got her with the rise. Fouts is rolling. Turns back from her injury. Lined right out to Hoover. Side retired. Four, nothing. Right back to Fouts. And the Alabama Crimson Tide are your SEC champions for the sixth time with a record-breaking run at the Rhodes House.